This particular decision has created mega waves back at the Montecito mansion, as you can imagine. But as ever, what are we talking about? Hi, good morning. Neil Sean here. Nice to have your company. Nice to see you. Yeah, are you all right? I'm oh, not so bad, thanks. Yeah, bit of hay fever. But it's, we're in Kensington Park, by the way, now. Say, so, wait, it's me, you know. I did laugh, actually, the other day, because I was genuine when I said to you, you know, we filmed this alone. And what's interesting is you do get people walking past. And I think a lot of people don't understand the digital technology, you know. There you are holding the camera, holding the stick. And they're thinking, who's he talking to? Because they look at the phone and they don't see the picture, you see. They're thinking... Oh dear, it's a bit lonely. <laughs> Play up to it a bit, you know. Good job you can laugh at yourself. Is it? Well, I know, what do you mean you're laughing at me? It's a good job though, isn't it? You can laugh at yourself. Back as ever to your breaking royal story of the day. Now, you know, what I find fascinating in this particular story, on a more serious note, is it is a rather difficult time now for Meghan and Harry. This is, you know, one of those breaking moments, simply because, if you think about it, Prince Harry was adamant that he would receive exactly what he wanted from the British Home Office. That is, of course, the Home Office run by his father, His Majesty's Government. Now, as one can imagine, you know, Harry himself felt with his IPP status, and even though he placed himself on the HRH as a title, he thought at some point that the government would indeed concede and offer him the full security that he required. Obviously, that wasn't meant to be. Nothing to do with his father at all. It was simply, finally, a judge that made a decision. It was the right decision because, obviously, people over here in the United Kingdom simply don't want the added burden of, you know, bonus, should I say, of paying taxes for someone who's actually not in the country. It's not easy. Now, moving forward, where does this really now leave Prince Harry? He's really concerned, and so is Meghan Markle, according to that good source, because security over in America is incredibly, and, you know, one can imagine this 24 7 security out of the Montecito mansion. If they go anywhere, the travel, the expenses, the hotels, they can't just pick up security as and where they decide to go. But of course, as we said before, these are very trying times. It's difficult now because Harry himself made it difficult, particularly with his autobiography and, of course, the reference to the Taliban. But what's interesting now is how does he fund this? And also, you know, while ever you may think they have a lot of money and people bandy around these figures from Netflix and Spotify and the book deal, they don't get all of that money at once, you know. Money goes through, as you can imagine, like water, particularly where security and those sort of elements are concerned. People are also forgetting that at the time of the alleged car chase in Manhattan, there was alleged stalker caught in the grounds, looking around uh, outside, should I say, the Montecito mansion. So you can understand their natural fears for security. Now, what I can tell you is this. Obviously, if they wish to return back here to the United Kingdom, they would be afforded Scotland Yard protection, particularly if they wanted to base themselves back under a royal residence, one that belongs to the Crown, like Buckingham Palace. Obviously, though, that causes problems because while I'm assured that Prince Harry would not be, shall we say, unperturbed to have six months here in the United Kingdom and six months back in California, thus, of course, saving a whole chunk of money in security, is not something that his wife, Meghan Markle, wishes to do for more obvious reasons. So for now, Harry has this very big, very stressful plate full, of course, of how is he going to pay for that very expensive security. And now, according to that source, Meghan and, of course, the rest of the world know exactly that the government over here are not willing to shell out for it. She's concerned, allegedly, not just for her, but for her husband and, of course, the two children. But one might say you had all the protection you required while you were a member of the British monarchy. It was simply your choice to go it alone. And how you fund that was simply up to you. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.